Hi, it's Roger here with our very first Q&A video. So I'm gonna to get to those in a moment and thank you to everyone who put in your questions. And for anyone new to this channel, I started this channel about three months ago and it was really kind of for the lead up to our book in America. But one thing led to another, we got great feedback and so I decided to continue with this channel. And every week I'm gonna be giving different tools or tips for your entrepreneurial journey, like how you wanna build your business, I, and this is from not just my thoughts and ideas, it's from the experiences of people that I'm seeing all around the world who are going through a similar journey to you. Um, so in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna be sharing some really important announcements of what's coming up, some really exciting stuff. Make sure you subscribe so that you get to see those videos. And as I'm going through these questions, you know, if questions come up for you and you're thinking, well, what would be the answer to this? Drop them in the comments box and then we'll get to them in upcoming videos as well. All right. So we've got a whole bunch of questions here. The first one is from Francisco Torres. Hi Roger, love your videos and programs. Question, how do I introduce the concept of going global in my business, which consists primarily of health services? I'm a physician practicing anti-aging wellness medicine, currently servicing only the local market. All right, so just to kind of get started, you'll notice it's a sunny day here. I'm here in Bali, which is where I live. I have my tie-dye t-shirt on, not just because I like looking like uh, a hippie here, but because I'm gonna be talking a lot about the wealth spectrum. And a lot of the questions are related to that, right? So I thought, well, why not get as multicolored as possible? And Francisco, your question is all about the yellow level, which is the player, the person playing the guitar, where the moment you stop, the music stops, right? So you gotta keep on figuring out how to grow it further, how to extend it further as well. Especially if you're in something like wellness or something where you're using your time to provide a service, where you're almost like charging by the hour, the problem with that is you can't scale it. At some point, your time runs out. So the only way to go global with that is to be able to turn your time and your service into either a product or a promotion. You're actually effectively giving what you do a name so that it can be exported without you. This is the concept of, we all heard about brands, but, but thinking of a brand as a mark, think of a brand as a river of flow. Only when you've actually created that river of flow can you walk away from it and the flow will continue. Uh, something like my Wealth Dynamics program, we've been doing that for so many years, and most of the people that experience that product uh, by doing the profiling test, they, I haven't even met them, they haven't even met me, but they'll still get the value of it and they can still pass that value on for others as well. So how do you do that if you're in the health industry? Two people here I wanna share with you who did it slightly different. Um, these are two people that I've worked with, they're part of my mentoring group, they're in Australia, they've got, they've got amazing businesses which are really growing now, based on the way that they've branded their offering, branded their value. Uh, first person, Joe Formosa, I'm gonna put a whole bunch of links here that you can follow as well. Uh, she has a company called Back to Health, and if you go look at her website, you'll see that it's all about Ayurvedic medicine. But what she did, which actually really shifted her ability to scale and to have customers all around the world, was well, she took the, the whole way she was using Ayurvedic medicine to, to clear your system, to get to the benefit. One of the benefits is your ability to detox and your ability to lose weight and she created the Smart Detox program, which does exactly that. And so as a result of having a brand now, the Smart Detox program, which was part of her Back to Health plan, um, by her putting that together, she then had people in different countries wanting to do it online, wanting to take it to their country as well. So package what you've got in a way that it's now a program or it's a product. Now the second person, uh, Jung Price, also in Australia, Beyond Good Health, there's another link here. Um, she's also all about holistic medicine, um, she had a series of different programs she created. Uh, she has one which is on natural hormone balancing. She has a Beyond Slim weight loss program which is linked to the whole Beyond brand. Uh, and it's the same thing, once you've created that, you'll find others who are in your industry who want to partner with you, use those products in a way that can support them in their products as well. So there's a brand triangle, personal brand, product brand, and then business brand. And the three of them linked together, you know, Oprah Winfrey is the personal brand, Harpo, which is Oprah Backwards, is the company brand, and then the Oprah Winfrey Network or before the Oprah Winfrey Show is the product brand, and then people can come and play at the right level, and you can connect the people at that right level too, but without that product brand, you can never scale globally, and without those products that can move without you, you can't either. Second question, nerdy creator. Okay, hey Roger, I'm from Singapore. Happy that you did a video at Singapore. That was the last video you can go have a look at. It's interesting that you talk about economies of scale and speed. So the industrial age was the economies of scale because you have to have the factory, the now technological age is the, is the economies of speed. You have to actually go faster and you're gonna beat the big guys if you're actually able to deliver what people want to them in a more frictionless way. Uh, I've jotted them down, something to think about. I have a mechanic profile. 
So we have the wealth dynamic square, the people who are more creative and introvert, like uh, Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg are mechanics. Singapore is great in many things, but I really would love to uh, help uh, with to help the creative industry in Singapore to grow. Don't know how I could possibly do that yet. Still trying to figure out how my mechanic profile could help the creative industry. Okay, so here's what's interesting about mechanics is that they're really great at being able to create systems as opposed to the product um, or a platform. Uh, go have a look at logotournament.com, uh, 99designs. They, they were built by mechanics that created a system for other creators to come in and use that system and connect with the right clients to do competitions, to design your logo, design your website. Uh, and here's the interesting thing, there haven't been any yet that have been done really well for the Chinese market. And this week, China just overtook America as the number one economy in the world in terms of their GDP by PPP. And you can see what that means by going to this link. And uh, if you were to do something like that, do something similar to that, which was then bringing together all of these creatives and actually linking them in different languages. It could also be in, uh, uh, for the Indian subcontinent as well, uh, the Chinese, the Japanese, then there's a huge, this is happening in a lot of different industries where things work great in English because that used to be the predominant uh, language on the internet. It's not anymore. You know, internet, uh, English is now a minority language on the internet compared to all the other countries on there uh, that are speaking different languages. So there's some amazing tools or platforms like that that mechanics or a mechanic like you could create. The other thing is outside of platforms is completing things well. So I know some mechanics who work really well creators by being the, the proofreaders, by being the finishers on the project. Um, and so again, you're gonna find people who are creators who are great at starting things, not so good at finishing it, and you can provide that service to the creators you want to work with, uh, and they'll love you for it, because it means that they can get onto other things much more effectively. Uh, okay, Wayne Yeager. Hi Roger, pleasure to meet you in LA. All right, so we met in Los Angeles. Here's a quick question. I was just reading The Fourth Turning, in which the authors label people as artists, prophets, heroes, or nomads. But if you haven't read that book, you can see the link here. Uh, but they're applying those labels to whole generations, not to individuals, which is what I do with the Wealth Dynamics test. So I was curious if you noticed any generational tendencies in Wealth Dynamics profiles, like does it change over time? And in other words, have you detected a different distribution of creators versus supporters, lords, baby, like as opposed to baby boomers, Generation X or millennials? So Wayne, this is what I found. Um, it depends on what country you're in. Um, it's not like the whole globe is shifting. Like when someone talks about, uh, you know, the youth in China, well, the truth is they actually are coming up with a very different mindset than the youth in America. And in fact, if I just take those two countries as an example, um, China, the, all, all countries go through seasons. In fact, even our generations go through seasons, depending on which country you're in. Uh, and in China, you only had to go back 20 or 30 years and China was in the winter. Uh, in fact, the most, the, the richest man in all of China was in Hong Kong, Li ka -shing. He was an accumulator profile, same as Warren Buffett. And that happens when, it always happens in cycles. So whenever a country is going through its winter period, it's the people who actually are the best at accumulating, holding onto things, not taking the risk, that actually end up becoming the wealthiest people. But it's now shifted around, and it's actually gone from the winter up to the spring. And you find many, many more people now in China who have the entrepreneurial spirit. You know, Jack Ma is now the richest man in China, and he's a creator profile. And so it's all about the risk-taking. People used to look at people like Li ka -shing, the industrialist, and say, that's the way to go. They don't anymore. They're now looking at the Jack Mars of the world. The opposite has happened in America. You know, America, it was the, you know, the Steve Jobs of the world, the creators that people would look at and aspire to be. But today, the wealthiest people in America and South America, Warren Buffett, uh, 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 take people like um, Carlos Slim, uh, and even the, the tech guys, you know, uh, someone like Mark Zuckerberg is a mechanic profile. Someone like Larry Page is a Lord profile. They're the introverted side. They're creating systems. They're, not, they're the winter energy. They're not the ones actually out there creating the spring energy. So important to know this because it means that you can take a global view and based on what profile you are, you can focus at particular countries which are really growing well or really on fire. Um, and it's as easy doing business in those places, even if you're in another country, uh, and getting into flow. You know, our biggest markets at the moment for what we do are places like South Africa, uh, places like Australia, which are all going through their spring summer energy at the moment. So being aware of that allows you to really get yourself in your flow by tapping into the flow of others as well, but it changes from country to country. Ain Dallas. Hi, Roger. Absolutely love your videos and kudos to you for bravely tackling, walking in them and descending what looked like four separate escalators in this video, right? That was the last video. 
yeah, it was escalators down a mountainside or a hillside in Singapore. There were escalators everywhere. I'm interested in growing my business as a psychologist to a global market. So this is a little bit similar to what we heard earlier from Francisco. Um, but this is now on the corporate side. I want to include leadership coaching and to focus on the mental health of the organization itself. Thoughts, comments, love these videos. They are like vitamins to me. All right. So we're really talking about what to do if you're gonna go for a corporate market or if you wanna grow globally and you don't yet have the strength to do it on your own, you're still building your own brand. Well, you've got two choices. You can either build your brand slowly, like building a mountain, or you can parachute in. Uh, when we launched Million Master Plan in America, I was like, well, I can go to America and just spend lots of time building, my, building the trust of everyone around us, which is what you need within a brand to make it succeed. Or I can go to the people that already are trusted uh, and I can get them to partner with me. I can deliver value to them, vice versa. Uh, and then, of course, we can then bring everyone on board, then supporting the book, and then me, in turn, supporting them and their networks as well. And that's exactly what happened, and that's what we focused on doing. You know, we have got, talking in your case, uh, we have got quite a number of people who have um, joined Talent Dynamics, which is the corporate side. I'm in partnership with Michelle Clark, who was the head trainer for Marks & Spencer's in England and now runs Talent Dynamics, which actually provides the same profiling tools that we use in Wealth Dynamics to big companies and governments around the world. Uh, we have people, we just ran the Trust Conference where Bob Geldof came and spoke there. And the really great thing about that is the number of companies that are waking up to the economies of speed and the need for trust in their business and what happens when they lose the trust as well. And the whole Talent Dynamics system allows them to do that. So, uh, you know, talking about the mental health of a business, which is really talking about the stress level of the business and talking about the trust of that business, um, that is something where you can either go figure it all out for yourself or go join a network like Talent Dynamics. We've got what, 300 uh, different practitioners around the world and they're always joining as part of a community. So get into a community like that or another one that you find where everyone can then be learning from each other, sharing resources, and of course immediately then you meet the person who's in Japan or the person in China or the person in you know, Brazil who's already part of the network and who's able to share with you what's happening there and you very quickly find out where the gaps are that need filling so that you're not there trying to figure it out for yourself, right? So parachute in and do that by getting into a network where there's others already like-minded. Even if you think you've got a great idea and you're the only person in the world who's had it, you're not. Other people have had it. The best thing to do is instead of saying, well, how do I protect my idea and hold on to it, is to say, well, who else is most likely to have had this idea? Go out there and find it, and you're gonna find the people around there who've got that flow. Well, they're gonna to wanna to partner with you if you're someone who's bringing value more than trying to compete with you, because whoever's in flow, well, guess what? Those people, while some people have the time but not the money, those people have the money but not the time, and they need that precious resource from those who are like-minded. Uh, okay, Simple Eclair, this is uh, Jonathan, Simple and Clear. Hi, Roger. Thanks for this opportunity. I have a personal development website with solid knowledge, and I start to understand it would be easier to reach and convince a smaller tribe first than to go wide like this site can help you sort, of everything, sort out everything, right? Which is true, it's about how do you niche and get focused. But my question would be, how would you develop a piece of it and make it a reference, a lighthouse for your public? In this video, you're talking about finding a way with the least resistance um, and connections, right? So that's what I talk about in this video, the one here. Would you, uh, uh, would that involve setting up a platform? Do I have to go set up a platform like GeniusU, uh, a, a meeting point, which is what I talked about, is how Singapore became so successful. No, you don't have to go to all that complicated effort to do something like that. Um, you could use, uh, you could use technology, as, which is easy to get. You can use a WordPress membership site. You can even just use Facebook groups. A really simple way to bring people together is not about the technology. It's about the bind that those people have where you're delivering an experience. Uh, I was speaking uh, with uh, Brian Walsh just this week who runs entrepreneurs.co.za, a South African company. There's a link there to that. And it basically, if you go to it, you'll see it very similar to what you're doing. It's providing, in his case, entrepreneurial advice um, and it has all sorts of contributors who are there. It's got you know articles that have come through that he's found from Richard Branson. There's articles from myself and others. Uh, and then when people come on board, uh, they can then get the experience. I mean, they get there for free, but the experience is where they then join the success club. And the success club is now where they're actually paying every month to be part of the club. And for that, they're getting the community, they're getting networking events, and more importantly, they're getting to some of the big events that he then runs with some world-class partners. Uh, and as a result of that, they're getting this amazing value by being part of that and it's a sustainable model which grows. So remember that in today's market, people are spending less and less on content. You two just gave their last album away for free, but they'll make more money on the experience, on the concerts. And in exactly the same way, if you've got your community you're building, give away the content for free. Don't try and charge for it anymore the way that they used to. 
but bring the people that want more of an experience together to be able to create that experience for them. And you're going to find you're going to make a lot more money with a small number of people you're giving high value to than going out trying to make a small amount of money off many, many people. Right? And we see that in models all over the world right now as well. Uh, okay, link to coaching. This is from Heidi. Good morning, Roger. I'm a new client of Wealth Dynamics and I'm a lord. Right? So it's like on the introvert side. I've got a global business idea I'd love to talk to you about. What's the best approach for me to take? Ha, huh, okay. So you might have an idea, I'm talking to Heidi here, but it might be others as well out there who might have an idea. It's like, oh, I'd like Richard Branson to know about this idea, or I'd like Roger to know about this idea, or I'd like whoever it is that's in your industry or the person that you're watching or following at the moment that you'd like to know about it. Like, how do I get this idea to them? Richard Branson is a good example. Like I had some thoughts and ideas and I thought, I wonder if something like this would be interesting for Richard Branson. So guess what? I went out to see him. I went to his island, to Necker Island. Uh, and, and I'll be doing the same again this next year coming up as well. Uh, with our events that we run here in Bali at Vision Villas, the same thing. If we have anyone who comes along and says, uh, we uh, have an idea, we'd like to work with you, we always start the same way, which is, well then invest your time. Show up at one of our events, I'm there, I'm here. But, but what we find is nine times out of 10, people who say they have an idea, they're not willing to invest their time to really get in front of the people they want to get in front of and say, here's how committed I am. Now, it doesn't mean everyone who makes that commitment we're going to work with, but it's the first step. And it's a really nice filter. And the reason I'm sharing that with you is if you have people who want to partner with you, same thing goes, make sure that you're taking the most precious resource, which frankly isn't money anymore, it's time. And you're seeing how much is someone willing to invest in their time because they really want to work with us or not. Because if they're not willing to invest time to actually even present the idea or to share it, they're certainly not gonna invest the time to actually run it either. So Heidi, that's what I'd say to you. You know, Invest the time, find some time next year when you can come along to Bali to one of the things that we're doing out here, an iLab or one of the programs. Uh, and of course you'll see me there, right? And then I'd be more than happy to hear whatever your idea is. Uh, Sharu Shafi, hi Roger, I believe I'm a star at heart. Like there is one side of me who has star character, but there is another side of me who has doubts, fears, who's stopping me. My question is, what were your blocks that were stopping you from showing up as a creator star and how did you manage them? Ha, huh. all right, here's the truth. It isn't like there are some profiles that don't have doubts and fears. We all have doubts and fears. In fact, you can take the most, President Obama is the president of America. Does he have doubts and fears? Of course he does. In fact, not having doubts and fears is the worst thing possible because there's only one thing worse than lack of confidence, which is overconfidence, right? It's, it's what sinks so many people because they're no longer putting their warning signs on when those things happen. I have doubts and fears all the time. In fact, if you don't have doubts and fears, you're not stretching yourself enough. But then the question is, well, but if I have them, how do I manage them? And the way I found to manage them is by understanding that failure has two different types. You have failures that sink you. That's the kind where you're like taking off in the plane, you have no idea how to fly, you crash, that's not a good idea. Failures that sink you are the ones where you do an injury, you're out of the game, you can't go back into it again. It, it takes away all your confidence. Then there's failures that steer you. It's how a plane flies, how the rocket gets to the moon. It's never quite on course. It keeps on adjusting itself as it goes. And a failure that steers you allows you to always stay on course. Uh, and you're always failing. You're always trying new things that aren't working. And you might have a doubt about something. I wonder if this is gonna work. Remember, doubts and fears come from the word risk. I like to use the word risk as R-A-S-K, reaction to incomplete or summary knowledge. You know, when someone knows how to risk a million dollars and make money out of on the stock market, he's not actually taking as much of a risk as someone putting in a thousand dollars for the first time, right? So it's not about the size of money or the size of uh, investment. It's about the reaction to incomplete or summary knowledge. Take those risks, to, take those failures to add more to your knowledge base, um, to try new things out and test them as well. So that's what I would say, absolutely critical. Maximize the failures that steer you, test and measure, test and measure. And every time I go, well, if I have this plan or I wanna make this happen in the next year, would that excite me? Does that frighten me a little bit? Yes. Okay, how do I break that down into now the steps which allows me to be able to see that at every point I'm trialing it, testing it, and then moving on. And the ways you can minimize that, number one, frequency, bring down the rhythm of review and renew. So like you're testing every day and checking on it or taking, doing it every week then every month. Uh, and similarly, when it comes to people, right? Bring good people on board because those guys are the ones who already know how to do it in ways you might not. And if you've got a big enough idea and they see you as track, uh, credible and you build a track record, they'll work with you and they'll bring that knowledge with them as well. And final question, Paul Dunn. All right, Paul. Uh, Mr. Lee would love this video too, Roger. And in the Prime Minister's speech on Friday, uh, he spoke about how climate change is changing shipping routes and how Singapore needs to adapt. So again, referring to the last video I did, lovely to hear Alex and Megazip featured in this video too. 
Uh, here's a question for a future video. Why is giving such a critical part of growing? Well, Paul Dunn is one of our mentors at iLab and it's great to see you, Paul, connecting and sharing. And for anyone else who's listening in who knows me and you wanna ask questions even in this forum, go ahead and do it. Uh, great to get your question, Paul. Paul runs uh, uh, Buy One Give One with uh, Masami. It's an amazing organization that went from nothing up to 51 million giving transactions or impacts by working with companies and tying them together with the right uh, charities, right? So you can go have a look at that. It's an awesome, awesome company that I think um, does amazing work and you should be part of. But this whole concept of giving is so critical. And I, you know, I wanna finish by really talking about the three things that for me are the reason outside of the obvious as to why having a focus on giving instead of getting is so critical. The first one might not seem obvious, but it is once I explain it. It's about your direction of focus. You know, if you're in a river and you're focusing on getting, you're looking upstream, which means you're always against the current. It's like, how do I get, how do I get, how do I get? And it just feels like there's pressure all the time because it's really difficult to get stuff when you're out saying, can I get stuff, right? Like if you need money, like how do I get money? Well, I'll go where other people get money. I'll go to a bank. Well, guess what? They've got a whole bunch of things you need to do to go through. And at the end of the day, you might have the money, but you've also now got a debt, right? But you turn around 180 degrees and you look downhill, you go to where the river's going, that's giving. You're constantly giving. It's not even money or what are you giving. It's water coming from others that you're then giving on. Once you do that, that you suddenly realize there's no limit to what you can get. There's, a, there's no limit to what you can give. There is a limit to what you can get, right? But as you actually start finding a better way down the mountain, more water shows up. It's just what happens. More importantly, if you're asking that question, which is, which is like, how do I get money? But how do I give an awesome investment opportunity, right? How do I, how do I give uh, a value to someone uh, who could really deliver this value? Like, you know, my ability to create a system as a mechanic. You suddenly find yourself surrounded by other people who are in that same state. You know, in the moment I said, well, how could I actually give investments onto the right companies that are looking for investments? I get surrounded by other investors. And so then suddenly looking for money is not a problem because you've found those same people who are also giving as well. So that first one is absolutely critical. And I really, really recommend for anyone here who's thinking of how do I get something, switch it around to how can I give? And there's a, there's a link here to this whole concept of opportunities which you can give as opposed to requests, which is things you're trying to get, right? Um, second thing, which I would also share, is it changes the company you keep. Like as I was just mentioning, as you actually start shifting to the giving side, there's a whole bunch of people in the world trying to get stuff. And if you're thinking that same way, you find yourself surrounded by them all the time, that's all you see. But you turn around and you start actually thinking about the giving, you find there's a whole bunch of people out there that are thinking about what's the value I can give. And they're coming from a space of abundance, which is amazing. And it's not blind abundance, it's actually real, like tangible abundance where they're actually out there making money because it's not just giving, it's effective giving, right? It's like you can, you know, it's like if you watch a game of cricket, you know, you can see sometimes they hit the ball and it goes in the crowd and the ball never comes back. The guy keeps the ball, right? Baseball is the same thing. They take the ball home with them. But from the people on the pitch, even when you hit the ball and it goes to the opposition, it still stays in play. And that's because the people inside the pitch are the ones playing the game. That's effective giving. The, the, the ball stays in play. The ones that you send to people outside who aren't even playing the game, that never comes back again. So don't think for a moment that by me giving, I'm somehow gonna get stuff taken away from me. If it's going within people who are playing the same game as you, and you can always find those people, they're gonna be passing it back your way as well. So that's the second thing. And the third thing probably would be summing it up with uh, that Winston Churchill quote, which I love, which is that we uh, make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. It's the giving which actually creates the lifestyle or creates the way that we want to be living our lives as an example to others. Um, and it's the kind of life you wanna be passing on to your kids by being that example. No one ever wants to be an example by just getting stuff, but they do wanna be an example by, by what they give, by their legacy. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I've just given, gone through a whole bunch of different things. Here's a link to the Wealth Dynamics if you're interested in more. Here's a link to the Spectrum Levels we've been talking about if you're interested in more. Uh, and of course, you can just do things like the Genius Test for free as well. But I'd love to get your questions in the upcoming videos. Subscribe and we will connect again in an upcoming video. Some exciting things to share in the next one coming. All right, until next time, we'll speak to you later.